As I said in my video about the Beatles that got 15 thumbs down and 11 thumbs up, so it, it kind of surprised me that that many people disliked it. Must be because I was critiquing John Lennon, um, even though I think it, I think some of his songs were the best ones in the Beatles. Um, even though musically, uh, if you take away the production values that George Martin offered, uh, some of the songs would seem kind of mediocre. Um, I mean, there. You have a mix of things that make up a good song, right? And if you take away one element of a good song, sometimes the song isn't so good. I mean, this can be done. You know, you take a, there could be a uh, a song that the lyrics aren't very good, and if you took away the good music, the song would be crap, right? So, I mean, every every song has certain things that are good about it, and usually some things that are mediocre about it. One thing about the Beatles is the production in all of their later stuff was, was over-the-top awesome. Um, maybe not as much the album Let It Be, because that was... I think that's the album. That's the one that was produced by Phil Spector instead of being produced by George Martin, and that's why it didn't have nearly the uh, the impact that stuff like the White Album and Sgt. Pepper had, right? So, but production is probably a good 80% of what makes something a good album. It's why it's disappointing how many people don't pay attention to it. And it's disappointing why people don't even know who George Martin is. Very disappointing. And he died last year and there wasn't even a blip about it, like I said in the, in the Beatles video. You know, something I thought was just pathetic is, is I can't remember how many years ago, but there was a, there was a new Beatles album that, what was it, Anthology, and there were a couple new songs that were that there were pieces of from the studio that they wanted to release as new. And guess who had they had do the production work? Jeff Lynn. Mr. ELO, the guy who produces every song exactly the same, same fucking thing, every single fucking song. If he's involved anywhere in in a song, it's guaranteed it's gonna be jinga 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 punch tinch punch titch punch titch jinga 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 that's it and the drum has to have all this 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 reverb and effects on it, it the, the 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 snare drum it, it's the same fucking production every goddamn song is the same fucking production go ahead and look through anything that Jeff Lynn is involved in and you're going to hear that same production value the only stuff that didn't have that was ELO's early stuff that actually made the, the name Electric Light Orchestra have some validity. It actually had some orchestra behind it. And that wasn't on that wasn't on Jeff Lynn. That was a I can't remember what the name of that producer was. I should probably know it. I should probably look that up. But as soon as Jeff Lynn be, is the one producing it, jinga 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 punch titch punch titch you know, now Jeff Lynn, you know when he's involved in it, there's always a really neat guitar line. It has a lot of nice style to it. It's got some vibrato. It's got some nice slides going on it. it he's, he has some neat guitar lines, but the production work is always the same every time. Now my favorite producer is Nigel Godrich. He's done all of Radiohead's albums, to my knowledge. He did Beck's Sea Change album, S-E-A, Change. If you haven't heard it, I recommend uh, checking it out. And he did what I consider Paul McCartney's best, uh, best album since he was in the Beatles, and that's Chaos and Creation in the Backyard. 
Um, there's one song on there that it's called uh, Riding to Vanity Fair. That song is probably the darkest song he's made, both musically and lyrically. Most of the time, Paul's uh, lyrics are, are kind of happy-go-lucky. This, this was pretty melancholy. And it's fantastic. If, if you look look up Paul McCartney writing to Vanity Fair. Great piece. Great, great piece of work. And it wouldn't have been anywhere the same if it wouldn't have been for Nigel Godrich. So, um, any, like, okay, one of the things, let's say, let's look at Madonna's early works. Um, borderline, uh, 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 Papa Don't Preach. Um, look at her early works. Do you know what gave her that sound? It was the producer. What gave her the sound in the Like a Prayer album? It was the producer. And, well, you know, she switched to uh, some producers that uh, do rap and some that do uh, EDM in the later stuff, and that's what made her stuff kind of suck later on. In my opinion, in my opinion, okay? Um, one of the things about EDM is that the actual music itself doesn't really matter that much. It's all about the production work. EDM is all about the production work. It's one of the reasons why I don't like it much. Um... You, you could you could have a song that's it could be Mary had a little lamb and they could turn it into an EDM song that everyone just says oh this is the best song ever right so <clears throat> same problem I have with a group like Dragon Force they could take a song like like Mary had a little lamb and find a way to do arpeggios on it with the guitar and other stuff and it'd be the most epic song ever right even though it's mary had a little lamb you know again production is is i i it's probably 80 85 percent of what gives an album the sound that it has so if there is an, a particular album by an artist or band that, that you just think is their very best, look into who did the production work on it. And then look into other groups, bands, or artists that use that same producer and see if maybe it's the producer that you like more than the band. 